So I've always been fascinated by the human capacity for creativity. And so not only artistic creativity or even scientific discovery, but our everyday ability to be creative, whether that is coming up with ideas and new recipes in a kitchen, um, or coming up with clever ways to entertain our kids. And I've been really interested in the initial source of creativity and creative thinking. So where do ideas come from? What's the initial source of creative inspiration and insight? And this curiosity led me to study the psychology and neuroscience of creativity. And I've been studying creativity over the past 10 years uh, as a researcher and as a professor. And over the years, I've learned a few things about the creative brain. And so although we have regions of our brain that support our ability to remember, to see the world, to pay attention, and to understand and produce language, there doesn't seem to be a creativity region of the brain. There's not one region of the brain that we know of that just does creativity. But what about a creative hemisphere of the brain or a creative side of the brain? There's a popular belief that the right side of the brain does creativity and the left side of the, of the brain does other things and the people that are more creative um, are more right-brained. Well, actually, after decades of research in neuroscience, this does not seem to be the case. There's no strong evidence that people that are more creative are more right-brained or use their right hemisphere more than those that are left, less creative. Instead, what does seem to be the case is that creativity happens across the whole brain through the interaction of many different regions and both hemispheres of the brain through what are called networks. And so instead of, as I mentioned in the beginning, a single region that does creativity, we have many different regions that are connected to each other. And it is these connections that support our ability to think creatively and do many other things. And one brain network that is particularly important for creativity is called the default mode network. And neuroscientists discovered the default network when people were just uh, relaxing in a brain scanner and not actually doing anything in particular, not focusing on anything. They were focused inward on their own thoughts. And it turns out there's a lot of interesting things happening when people are just resting and, and thinking to themselves. Things like remembering past experiences, imagining future experiences that haven't happened yet, um, mind wandering, daydreaming. And what a lot of these things have to do in common is that they all involve, to some extent, idea generation. And so this is thought of as the idea generation network of the brain. So many regions that are connected to each other that support our ability to generate ideas, imagine possibilities, and entertain different concepts. And to really think more spontaneously about, um, about creativity. But it's not always that our first ideas will be our best ideas. So we need another network that's going to kind of check the ideas that are generated and to evaluate them. So there's another critical part of the creative process that's called idea evaluation. So first you generate ideas, and then you have to evaluate if they're going to be any good, if they're going to solve any problems, um, and you have to kind of throw out the bad ones and pay more attention to the good ones um, and sometimes go back to the idea generation stage. And so you can think of the creative process in a simplified way as a cycle of generating ideas and then evaluating them. And there have now been several studies uh, in neuroscience that have, have found that the idea generation and the idea evaluation system in combination support all kinds of creative things that people do, from music improvisation to visual arts. So studies that have put uh, uh, musicians in a brain scanner and asked them to improvise new melodies have found um, 
a connection between these idea generation and idea valuation systems. And the same is true for visual art. So if you put a visual artist in a scanner and have them sketch out different ideas, uh, you'll see this interaction between the generation and evaluation systems of the brain. And in some of the research out of my group, we are interested in part in what makes some people more creative than others. And we've studied this from a neuroscience perspective. And we found that people that have stronger connections between this, the idea generation and the evaluation systems of the brain tend to produce more original ideas. And so we can use machine learning um, and predict somebody's creativity level um, by knowing the, the strength of the connections between these idea generation and evaluation systems. So these neuroscience findings raise questions about whether creativity is a fixed trait, that you have more of it or if you have less of it, and whether there can be something to be done about increasing um, our creativity. And fortunately, there have been many studies done over the years that have um, identified different techniques that could be used to improve creativity from mindfulness-based uh, interventions to having diverse experiences across different cultures and having being open to different perspectives to educational practices that could be more or less conducive to fostering creativity in uh, children. And most recently, there's been a huge interest in trying to understand whether artificial intelligence can uh, enhance human creativity in some way. And of course, um, most people are probably familiar with generative AI systems such as ChatGPT that can generate text and images all day long, as long as you ask them to, to produce ideas that will, will keep generating output for you. And there have been a few studies now that have shown that generative AI, such as ChatGPT, can help people come up with different ideas and help them solve specific creative problems. And we can think about these generative AI tools as assisting the idea generation stage of the creative process that I talked about earlier. Right, it's generative AI, it does idea generation, and so this can be one way that uh, AI is, is helpful for creativity. But what about idea evaluation? So this is the other stage of the creative process that I talked about. Um, and in my lab, we're, we're looking into whether you could use um, AI as a tool for idea evaluation, and we're calling it evaluative AI. And instead of having the AI generate the ideas for you, we're working with the AI to help us to evaluate the ideas and to, to, to see if they will, uh, to, to test the level of creativity. And the way this works is that we get uh, a large set of ideas. This could be drawings, it could be short stories that people have written. And we ask a group of people to evaluate how creative they think these ideas are, for example, on a scale of one to five. And although there's some disagreement, people tend to agree on the average, and you can take the average ratings and train a machine learning model that can learn patterns in um, creative ideas that are predictive of human ratings. So for example, in drawings, it will learn certain patterns in the drawings. In stories, it will learn certain patterns in, in the stories that are um, correspondent to different levels of, of creativity. And by the end, you have an AI evaluation system that can give feedback on ideas that is aligned with human perceptions and judgments of creativity. So this opens up um, a really big possibility to use these tools in real time to get feedback on your ideas. And so it'd be like, instead of asking 50 different people what they thought about the story you wrote or the drawing you had, you can have an, an AI that would give you real time feedback and help you to kind of learn from that and to um, come up with p potentially better ideas. And we have looked at this um, in a recent large study where we were interested in understanding whether this kind of AI evaluation, real-time AI evaluation, can help people to come up with more creative ideas. And so we collected data from t about 20,000 people, and about half of the sample, we gave them real-time feedback on their idea, and half the, the sample we gave them um, no feedback on their idea. And first, we asked them to draw, to make a, an, an original sketch. So they got like a, a tablet, 
and they were asked to make um, an original sketch and be as creative as they could. And then, as I mentioned, half of the sample got the feedback, the other sample got no feedback. Um, and then they were asked to do a second drawing after getting the feedback. And what we found was that the AI feedback actually increased the creativity on the second drawing that people did. So even after getting one round of feedback, this seemed to be conducive to helping people to, to come up with more original ideas. And I think even more importantly, it made people better at evaluating their own ideas. So instead of just getting a score on their, on their uh, drawing, they were able to come up with, they were better to better align and to learn from this feedback and to uh, become better evaluators of their own um, creativity. Okay, so what does the future of, of human creativity look like um, if we have these AI systems that can generate ideas and help us to evaluate? I think there's enormous potential in, in AI and, and creativity, but I think we need to kind of think carefully about where this all is taking us. So is the, is the natural progression of, the, of human creativity to just have AIs and, and robots kind of take over and replace human creativity? I hope that's not the case, and I, hope, I think that's what a lot of people um, would agree with as well. Instead, I think we need to think about how we can design and study these systems in a way where humans are kind of in control of the creative process, and these tools are acting as support for creativity and not um, replacing human creativity. And as we go forward, we have to think about how these technologies are really fundamentally changing the creative process. So the brain has been wired for creativity for such a long time. What does it mean when you introduce these technologies and how does that actually change um, the creative process and the creative brain? And the truth is right now that science really has no idea. This is just way too new to really have a, a sense of what's gonna happen with, with creativity and AI and how AI is changing creativity. So it's really important to invest research into this topic uh, to understand um, how we can make the best out of the situation and to really uh, continue to put humans in the driver's seat of creativity so that we can continue to shape our future and be in control of that process for future generations. Thank you. <laughs>